I read to you 24th chapter of Psalm, all entire verses. May God bless the readers and hearers and doers for reading of God's holy word. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. I'm singing. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Most gracious Father, I come now in the name of Jesus, thanking you, O oh God, through the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I come as humble as I know how, thanking you, O oh God, for watching over me all night last night. Lord, for looking over all of us, O oh God, and keeping our minds regulated, O oh Lord, that our focus is upon you. Our praise, O oh God, go to you who so much deserve it all, oh God. You deserve all of the praise. Lord, we thank you for all you have done for us and all that you will do. Oh God, we ask that you bless this service today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, through the aid of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you for according to all the working of the Holy Trinity. And Lord, we put it all in your hand. Look on those that are sick and need you now. And those that just need you, Lord, don't have no sickness, but God, have they worry. Whatever that may be, oh God, you got it all. You the answer to it all. And we thank you right now. So God, we just praise your name in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Whoa, whoa. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Well, Jesus is on. The main line, tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, and tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Just call him up and tell him what you want. Good morning, everyone. I got a song that I can sing. I got a song that I can sing and if I fail to sing it my soul belongs yes it's nobody's fault yes. but mine I got a song that I can sing I got a song that I can sing and if I fail to sing it my soul be lost yes it's nobody's fault yes it's nobody's fault but mine yes, yes. I got a Bible that I can read I got a Bible that I can read and if I fail to read it my soul be lost yes it's nobody's fault 
Yes, it's nobody's fault but mine. I got a prayer that I can pray. I got a prayer that I can pray. And if I fail to pray, my soul be lost. Yes, it's nobody's fault. Yes, it's nobody's fault but mine. I got a Savior that I can call. I got a Savior that I can call. And if I fail to call him, my soul be lost. Yes, it's nobody's fault. Yes, it's nobody's fault but mine. If I should die and my soul be lost, Yes, it's nobody's Say it, fault Say it. but mine. Yes. If I should die and my soul be lost, yes, it's nobody's fault. Yes, it's nobody's fault Hallelujah. but mine. I got a song yeah. that I can sing. I got a song that I can sing, and if I fail to sing it, my soul be lost. Yes, it's nobody's fault. Yes, it's nobody's fault but mine. Let's give the Lord some hand praise. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say praise his holy name. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Aren't you glad to be here this morning? The Bible said enter into his course with thanksgiving. And his gaze with praise. So, I got a reason to praise him. Hallelujah. I praise him because things are as well as they are. They're not perfect, but they're as they're good as I, I appreciate because it could be worse. Do I have a witness here? Just go down to Memorial Hospital. When you walk out, you ought to be praising him because it could be you. So I thank God to be in the house of prayer, giving me a mind to come and worship him. Father, I, I stretch. My hand to to thee, no one the hell I know. If Thou we withdraw thy self from me. Oh, well, the share. I, I go our father the father of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ here we are your people coming together 
dwelling in unity. But where there's unity, there's strength. So we come in your name today. Some thanking you for one thing. Some thanking you for another. But overall, you've been so good to all of us. But if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? Lord, now we ask for that you stretch forth your hand of love and mercy and grace. Touch those who stand in need of a touch. Just a touch will do. Look upon those who are on the bed of affliction. Look upon those, Lord, who are in the process of being healed. Yes, look upon Sister Opal. Look upon, Lord, the family of Sister Thompson in the passing of a loved one. Look upon Brother Cook this morning in the passing of a loved one. Lord, we all stand in need. You know all about it. So touch right now. Touch right now. There's power in your touch. Touch right now. Somebody needs your touch. Somebody's been going through hell and high water. They need a touch from you right now. Lord, lift up that bow down the head. Dry up the rivers of tears. And let your people know it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Yes. And whatever you do. It's for our good. And Lord, we're going to give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ah, in Jesus. In your precious name. This is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Oh, we 
with me while I'm on this tears journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Don't leave me alone, Lord. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone, Lord. Don't leave me alone. While I'm on this tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Be my friend, Lord. Be my friend. Be my friend, Lord. Be my friend while I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me while I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk. Said I wasn't gonna tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Lord, I couldn't keep it to myself. Lord, I couldn't keep it to myself. I said I wasn't gonna tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord had done for me. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Lord, I couldn't keep it to myself. Lord, I couldn't keep it to myself. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. You ought to been there. You ought to been there when he saved my soul. You ought to been there. You ought to been there when he put my name on the road. Then I, then I, then I, and then I. What the the Lord has done for me. You ought to been there. You ought to been there when he. Save my soul. You ought to been there. You ought to been there. When you put my name, name on the road, then I, then I, start talking. Then I, start then I, start shouting. What the Lord, the Lord has done for me. For me. A raising grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. 
was blind, but now I see. You ought to been there. You ought to been there. When he saved my soul. You ought to been there. You ought to been there. When he put my name on the road. Then I start then I start talking. Then I start talking. Then I start singing. Then I start shouting. What the Lord has done for me. You ought to been there. You ought to been there. When he Save my soul. You ought to been there. You ought to been there. When you put my name on the road, then I then I then I then I start shouting what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. You ought to been there. You ought to been there. You ought to been there. And I, then I, then I, then I, then I, what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. My, my, my. You ought to have been there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm. Could you turn with me? to the book of Nehemiah. The fourth chapter. Beginning at the 17th verse. Nehemiah 4. 17. Amen. When you have it, would you say amen? amen. Praise God. They I apologize. Turn to them. I'm getting to chapter 4 next week. <laughs> But turn to chapter 2. Right. Amen. I'm ready to jump ahead. But, uh, chapter 2 of Nehemiah, that's 17 verse. Mm, apologize for that. We will be in the book of Nehemiah. Started last week. somewhat of a series. Amen. It reads as follows, Nehemiah, the second chapter, the 17th verse. <clears throat> then said I unto them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. 18th verse, then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. I want to talk about, so come, let us rise up and build. There was once 
thriving little church in the country where internal squabbles developed that tore this little church apart. Attendance dwindled until <clears throat> the church died. <clears throat> In time, a middle class neighborhood grew up around the church. One day, a newcomer, tired of looking at this rundown church, starts painting and cleaning the old church. Some former members came to watch. They sat in the old dusty pews and told stories about the Sunday hymn songs that used to be sung in the old church, they talked about the potluck dinners that were had in the church. But oddly enough, no one mentioned the squabbles that occurred in the past. After a few days, <clears throat> the members started to help clean up the old place. Leaders in the community the homeowners association laughed at the idea of a church in their community. But even though they laughed, the old members persist, persisted and just kept on cleaning. Uh, within weeks, they resumed the hymn songs and the potluck dinners, songs of praise could be heard all throughout the community on Sunday mornings and even on Sunday evenings. Folks in the neighborhood would never attend the church began to come by. God saw it all and it was very good. To have done the best of things in the worst of times was pleasing in the sight of God. Nehemiah saw a similar scene when he returned to Jerusalem in 400 and 445 BC. What he saw was a city and its walls lying in ruins. The walls were broken and burned. What he saw was a city that had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian army. Yes, uh, destroyed and resulting in God's people being led into captivity. What he saw was uh, those who had returned to Jerusalem 70 years later struggling to rebuild. In fact, for almost 150 years after the initial damage, they had made only modest gains in the rebuilding process. The good news is that the walls under the leadership of Nehemiah were built in 52 days. Yes, it was the worst of times to do the best of things in Jerusalem. So I say to you this morning, come, let us rise up and build. In days of old, cities possessed strong exterior walls to protect their people and their wealth. These walls kept danger. These walls kept the enemy outside of the walls. And if perchance the enemy could breach the wall or find a way under it or over it, disaster would surely loom over the families within the walls should the city be taken. Believe it or not, wall building is a major responsibility for God's church today. It is worthy of mention 
uh, that God has not preserved this story recorded in this book to be looked upon as just mere history, but is recorded for the purpose of instruction for us today. The only difference here, my brothers and sisters, is that the walls that we are responsible for building are not made of brick and mortar but rather they are spiritual stones. Spiritual stones, what you mean, preacher? Well, the Bible says that we are lively stones. Yeah, and as lively stones, we must also be concerned about building the wall, a wall which is designed to keep that which is holy and sacred within it while at the same time keeping that which is not of God out of it. Come now, let us rise up and rebuild the walls. Nehemiah's passage reveals in our text as an object lesson that there are four hands involved in the rebuilding project. Three hands that are helpful and one hand that is harmful. After Nehemiah and his friends give their report in verse 17 of the sad present state of the people, which is followed in that same verse by the report of the sad state of the city. The first hand that Nehemiah makes mention of that is involved in the rebuilding process is the hand of God. Yes, in the first portion of verse 18, he writes, Then I told them of the hand of God, which was good upon me. Uh, here's a thought, my brothers and sisters, to remember. Whenever there's a problem in your life, even in the church, yeah, yeah, uh, the first hand, that should be laid upon that problem is the gracious hand of God. Repeat after me, Lord, Lord keep, your hand keep your hand upon every situation, every situation that, I face that I face and will face in this, in this life. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, this is what the Lord promises to do for those who put their trust in him when facing hard times. He has promised us that he will keep us safe. Yes, he will keep us in perfect peace. They that keep their minds stayed on thee. He will hide us. Yes, uh, he would hide us under the shadow of his wings. He will be close to us as we draw nigh to him. And ultimately, my brothers and sisters, he will turn that situation around. How many of you know God can just turn it around? When you put your trust in him, he will turn your midnights into days. Even before Nehemiah showed up in Jerusalem, even before he saw with his own eyes the destruction. His strategy, my brothers and sisters, was to ask God to help him put things back together again. And I just stopped by with the good news that God granted him his request. Yes, I stopped by to tell you, God will grant you your request when you invite his gracious hand to be on the problem. God will grant your request when you allow his gracious plans to be, his gracious hands to be on your plan. Yeah, yeah, his gracious hand must be in the project. Yes, uh, the second hand that is mentioned in Nehemiah's efforts was the hand of an outsider. God touched the heart of a heathen king who had no vested interest in Jerusalem. 
it's in verse 18. I also told the people of the hand of God that was on me, as I also told them about the king's words that he had spoken to me. Let me give you a little context here. King Artaxerxes of Persia was so moved by Nehemiah's concern over his people, over his homeland, that he took his hands and wrote a letter which gave permission and safe passage to Nehemiah to travel back to the land of his forefathers. He also used his hand uh, to write out on a requisition form so that Nehemiah could pick up the supplies that he would need to rebuild the wall. All of this was done by an outsider. Sometimes God will use an outsider to help those who are on the inside get the job done. It's, it's a fact noted in scripture that God will place a stranger in a strategic position to accomplish his purpose. Yes, case in point, when Jesus was born, God did not reveal the star of Jacob to the Jews, to the insiders, but he showed it to some astrologers that were called Magi's. Possibly they were Persians or they may have been from Arabia. They were outsiders. It was through God's revelation to the outsiders that prompted them to get on their camels and search for baby Jesus, to worship him and to bring him gifts. When they arrived at their destination, they went to the palace of King Herod and they asked this question, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Yes, we come that so that we may worship him. When Jesus was arrested on that unforgettable Thursday, after praying in the garden of Gethsemane and being whipped all night long, when he came time to carry that old rugged cross up Golgotha Hill, it was not the Jews who dwelt in Jerusalem, the insiders, whom the Roman compelled to help the Lord carry the cross, but it was a man named Simon of Cyrene, an outsider from Northern Africa, who gave Jesus a helping hand. What am I saying? God can use anybody from anywhere to fulfill his divine purpose in your life. After all, he is God, and he's God all by himself. And because of who he is, yes, he can use anybody. God can use people with a servant's heart. God can use people who pray. God can use a rebel without a cause. God can use those who made a great big mistake. God can use those who turn away from him. God can use that person who needs encouragement to encourage somebody else. God can use a person with a shameful past. God can use anybody he wants to be used and who wants to be used. God used different people for his purpose. Has anybody under the sound of my voice ever experienced God using somebody who didn't belong to any church, definitely didn't belong to the church you went to. Did God, you ever experienced God using somebody who was not a part of your clique? Have you ever experienced God using somebody that you hardly knew or that you never knew at all to help you and to bless you? Yeah, bless his holy name. 
God will bring somebody out of nowhere. Friends have forsaken you. Family have turned their backs on you. But God always got a mailman. God always got somebody who will deliver you. Yeah. Yes, he will. So come. Let us rise up and build, rebuild. The third hand, yeah. That God used to help Nehemiah rebuild the walls was the hands of the people. Yeah, I listen what he says. I, I told, eight, verse 18, I told the people that the hand of God was upon me. And I also told them what the king has said. I told them what the king had done. After hearing Nehemiah's testimony, the people said, come, let us rise up and build. The rebuilding of the walls included the hands of the believers whose hearts had been touched by God. And as a result, they had a willing mind to do the work. Yes, my brothers and sisters, as we look around, in our neighborhoods, as we look around in our communities, as we look around at the city as a whole, and even our nation, I'm sure you agree with me that there is much rebuilding that needs to be done. And in order for us to do it, we must first, like Nehemiah, be broken. Yes, Nehemiah mourned. Nehemiah cried, Nehemiah fasted, and Nehemiah prayed. How many of you know that prayer will change things? Yeah, 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 yeah. So in order, we must be broken. Be broken with a sincere concern about the challenging circumstances that others are facing. That's what humility is about. You walk around talking about your humble. But true humility is being more concerned about others than you are about yourself. I wish I had a witness here. Don't you know that when you are concerned about others, you are carrying out God's will. And when you are carrying out God's will, God will take care of you. Yes, he will. Be broken, I tell you. Over what our kids today are facing. Be broken when you see what our youth are going through. Be broken, I tell you, what you see our adults are facing. Uh, I be broken over what our seniors are facing. Be broken over what those within our own families are facing. Be broken over what we are facing and dealing with in our own lives. Because unless we are broken, I tell you, we will never feel the hand of God upon us. Unless we are broken, we can never receive the help from the outside as well as help from the inside, which we so desperately need. Yes. When Nehemiah received word that the walls were broken down and the gates burned with fire, he sat down and wept. Yes, he fasted and he prayed. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, Nehemiah's heart was broken. So the question I have for you, how much do you really care about the devastated lives that are around you. How much do we really care about those who don't know what it's like to be set free from pain? How much do we really care about those who need to be set free from some drug addiction, to be set free from heartache, to be set free from sin, and many other areas that sin can break in our lives. I ask this question because there are some who say they care. But unless we are willing to do something, 
I'm not sure about how much you really care. I have heard over the years those who say that they wish things were different. But on the other hand, I have seen some making a difference. And there are those who say they care, and then there are those who show they care. Right. Brethren, we exist, Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, and all the surrounding churches. We have a reason to be here. There's a purpose. We have a plan that we have to carry out. And it's not our plan. It's God's plan. Oh, yes. We exist to touch the lives of those who are broken and do something if God's hand is to be upon us. So I'll say again. I'll say it over and over. Come. Let us rise up and rebuild these torn down walls. The people had a mind to do the work. All one has to do is just flip over the page to the third chapter. In the third chapter you will read what Nehemiah says. And these are the people that helped rebuild the wall. Don't you know that what you do for Christ will last? Don't you know that all that you do for him does not pass his or does not escape his attention? God knows you and God knows where you're going. God knows what you be, where you've been and he sure knows what you are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just flip the page. Yeah, and, and, and Nehemiah says these are the people who helped rebuild the wall. And he starts with the leadership. He starts with the preacher. Yeah, the preachers built the sheep gate. And next to them, a man worked on the fish gate. And next to him, a man worked laying the beams and setting up the doors and next to him a man repaired and next to him another man was doing some repair work and next to him another man was doing some repair work and next to him another man was doing repair work and next to him another man repaired they repaired they repaired and they repaired and next to them, the valley gate was repaired. And next to them, the tower was being worked on. And next to them, a man, his son and his daughter was doing some repair work. And next to them, more doors, more locks, more bars were repaired. And next to him, a man repaired the duck gate. And next to him, a pool was restored. And next to them, men repaired this and men repaired that. And as they repaired, now get this, they had a tool in one hand and a weapon in another. Hallelujah. Y'all didn't hear me. I said they had a hammer in one hand and a weapon in another. And all the while, with the tool in one hand and a weapon in the other hand, the children kept bringing the water. The women kept cooking the food. I wish I had a witness here. I stopped by to tell you, the people had a mind to do the work. Well, Pastor, I'm getting hungry now. I understand. Oh, you said, except one thing. Yeah. And can you please tell us what this one thing you said means? You said while they were working, they had a tool in one hand and a weapon in another hand. Well, 
I did tell you that there were four hands involved in rebuilding the wall. I told you that three hands were helpful and one hand was harmful. The hand of God was helpful. The hand of an outside friend that God uses to help you is helpful. A true friend, someone who's even dear to your heart, the hand of them is helpful. But then, my brothers and sisters, there is this fourth hand yeah, that can be very harmful. And that hand, yeah, it can do more harm than good. And it's the hand of opposition. Whenever you start doing a good work for the Lord, uh, don't be surprised that when the enemy sticks up his ugly head and they get busy trying to pull you down. You, you were fine. <laughs> yeah, everything was all right. Before you start serving the Lord, everything is all right. When you are just sitting down warming the pews, sitting on the sidelines, the devil don't get mad about that. Can I get a witness? But when you start answering the call to serve the Almighty God, don't be surprised. When the enemy start raising his destructive hand, trying to keep you from making a difference in the lives of other people, isn't that just like the enemy? We even experience it in our own lives. When we try to be that good wife, when we try to be that good husband, when we try to be that good father, when we try to be that good mother, when we try to bring our children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and the enemy sees that you are gaining ground, he sees you getting it all together. Don't be surprised when he gets mad and start trying to kill, steal, and destroy you he may not kill you physically but yeah the enemy will try to kill you emotionally the enemy will try to kill you psychologically he will do things that can cause you to become distracted he will do things that can cause you to lose your focus look at your neighbor and say neighbor for God's sake don't lose your focus Neighbor, for God's sake, keep your eyes lifted up to the hills from which comes your help. For all your help comes from the Lord. Yeah, but I stopped by the intervention now. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That when the hand, yeah, of the enemy. Try to hit you with a punch. Yeah. Try to knock you down. You're doing something now. You're doing something. You got his attention. When you're in the world, you didn't have to worry about the punch because he had you in his hand. But oh, when you start serving God, I want to encourage you when he try to hit you with that punch be like Muhammad Ali do some weaving do some bobbing and did he happen to hit you take the lick and keep on ticking do I have a witness here yeah, and just know that no weapon 
that is formed against you shall prosper. That's what Nehemiah did when the hand of opposition saw that the work was being done. They lied on him. They talked about him. They took hands and wrote letters trying to scandalize him. But he took the hit. He took the lick. And he kept on kicking. He kept bobbing. He kept weaving. Do I have a witness here? He didn't argue. He didn't throw no uppercut. He didn't get mad. He just kept on kicking. Kept on working. Hallelujah. With, with the hammer in one hand. And a weapon This is your weapon. This is your weapon. This is your weapon. Yeah. Yeah. He stayed on the wall. I said, Nehemiah stayed. I said, he stayed on that wall. Can I get a witness here? They tried to get him to come down to meet with them. But I heard him say, I am doing a good work. Ain't God all right? And I cannot. I said, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot come down. And why? Why should I come down? to you because if I come down to you the work will cease I got I stop by to tell you when the devil is on your track when the hounds of hell are on your track you look back and tell them for God I live and for God I die get behind me ain't God alright I'm not I'm not coming down God has been too good. I can't come down. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. I'm coming down. I got his word. I got his word. Ah, God is where do you have his word? Hear it in your heart. When you got his word, hear it in your heart. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Hold fast. I, I said, hold fast to the profession of your faith. Hallelujah. You know what faith is? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it, uh, you're not walking by faith. You see, they thought it was impossible, but with the eyes of faith, Nehemiah could see the erection of the walls. Men think it's impossible. What you're trying to do, they laugh at you. They talk about you. They say, what are you doing? Who do you think you are? I stopped by to tell you. They just go on by what they can see. But you keep your eyes, keep your eyes fixed on the Lord. And he can do I said he can do, he can do what no other power. Oh, thank God. Yeah, thank God for people like Nehemiah. Thank you, Nehemiah. I got it now. 
but I stopped by to tell you, Nehemiah, I wish I lived with you back then in 400 and some BC. But that's all right. I'm glad about where I am now because I know a man. Who didn't give up? I know a man who didn't give in. And do you know his name? I said, Do you know his name? His name is above every name. At his name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. His name. I'll tell you his name. I know you know his name. You even called it in the midnight hour, in the night of trouble, when you couldn't get no sleep. You called this name early in the morning before you rose out of bed. You called his name during lunchtime when you get ready to eat your breakfast, get ready to eat your lunch. You call his name. I heard somebody say, Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Jesus. His name is Jesus. J E S U S G. He wouldn't give up. He wouldn't give in. Yes. They nailed his hands. They riveted his feet. They stretched him wide. They lifted him high. On that old rugged cross, I heard the soldiers say, You saved others. Why don't you come down and save yourself? I'm so glad he stayed there, he stayed there, he stayed there on that cross. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he stayed right there. And I just stopped by to tell you, if he died for me, I can't do nothing but live for him. Hallelujah. You know, Nehemiah is dead. Gone home to glory. But the God I serve, Jesus, on that third day morning, got up out of that grave of all power. Let us, let us, let us, let us get out of your seat. Let us get up, you sleepy head. Let us rise, 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 and rise, and put the hammer in the hand, and God's word on our heart, and let's rebuild these walls. Hallelujah. It don't take God long to do nothing. It took 150 years of struggling. With God's help, the wall went up in 52 days. It don't talk, take God nothing. Long to do anything. And he doesn't run out of anything. Everything we need, God's got it. Somebody ought to praise Him right now. I said, Everything we need, everything 
everything, 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 everything. Calvary, we got everything. It's just a few of us, but we got everything. Thank God we got everything. God will supply. Do I have a witness, Deacon Jojo? Do I have a witness, Deacon Stallings? Do I have a witness, Sister Thompson? Do I have a witness, Tiffany, that God will? God will. God will. Supply your need. Come on, let's give him some hand praise. God is working on you right now. Hallelujah. God is putting somebody's back life back together again right now. You must, you don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. The battle has already been fought. The victory has already been won. God is rebuilding you. God is making you over again. You ought to praise him. Yeah. I'm trying to stop now. But when I think about all I've been through, uh, I was torn down, didn't have nowhere to go. Yeah. But one day, Something start moving in my soul. I got up slowly, slowly. This wall slowly got up until now. You know what I found out, number one. Isn't it amazing? You are where you are right now. But you never heard God working on you. You didn't hear a hammer. You didn't hear a chisel. You know, God works on us in silence. How many of you know, know about the silence of God? God works in silence. Yes. You can't hear him working, but he's working. You may not think he's working, but I want you to know he's working. He's working it out and on your behalf. So whatever it is, keep it in his, his hands. Yes. Sister, Mother Lisa. Good afternoon, church. We have Elijah, am I pronouncing that right? Elijah, Elijah Lacey, she's coming to Calvary with Christian experience to be a member of our church. Okay, and we also have Jabri Calhoun. He's not, we're gonna to talk to Opal before he get baptized, but he's coming to be a member of Calvary. His parents, yeah, he want to be a member. We got to talk to his parents before he get baptized. Yes. Oh, did you talk to the parents? Not yet. Okay. Praise God. Please do. Hallelujah. What's your name again? Jabri. Jabri. I'm gonna call him Jabri. Jabri. He's coming to us after he has received the proper training and. And after everyone has been notified, hallelujah, we want to make sure we're baptizing those whose parents have consent. Yes, but you know what? I don't see no problem here. Hallelujah. Well, we want you to come. We want you to um, take a minute. Um, 
Uh, this is Opal's grandson. She's in the hospital. Somebody take, who's going to take Jabri under their wing and, and talk to him about the Lord? You will, Sister Gris Mother Grissom. Amen. We don't run out of anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jabri. Uh, but we're going to have you come back, okay? Because I want to, I want, to, I want to know what you know, okay? So we're gonna give time, but we welcome you and we thank you for coming to us. And so you let me know, Mother Grissom, when when you're ready. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Our hearts and our hands go out to you. Hallelujah. No problem here. We just want to know that He knows. Okay. Hallelujah. You all right with that? You okay? You all right. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Um, who we have here? She's already here. God bless you. Just tell them who Jesus is here. You talk to him and help Mother Grissom. All right. Who we have? Yeah. Uh, let's tell the tell the tell the congregation your name. Elijah Lacey. Elijah, Elijah Lacey. Well, it, it takes no rocket science to figure out who she's some kin to. <laughs> Praise God! It's your granddaughter, correct? <laughs> oh, y'all better check y'all genealogy. Hey, <laughs> man, this is the granddaughter of. Yeah, of uh, Mother Jones and the niece of Rihanna and Rihanna. Amen, Rihanna Newcomb. Amen. You are in good hands. Just, I'll tell you, would you like to become a member of the Calvary Missionary Baptist Church? Have you been baptized? Yes. She has. Uh, yeah. She comes to us by Christian experience. So there's no need to ask. Yes. She wants to be baptized again. You know, that's not necessary, but uh, we've done it before. And yes, Mother Thompson. R Rihanna's. Rihanna's daughter and your, your niece. Oh, it's Rihanna. All right. The, the technician back there. The one who got these TVs going. <laughs> It's her daughter. Praise God. Let's give the Lord some more hand praise. I tell you, you don't hear him working, but he's working. Hallelujah. What do we hear, Deacon Dugan? What's the name? Elijah. I'm making a motion that Sister Eliza come to be a member of Calvary Baptist Church. That's from Christian experience. And that she want to be baptized again. After being baptized, oh God, we thank her for her. And after being baptized, she will have all right and privilege right, right of any mother. Amen. That's the right hand of the fellas. Amen. Amen. She already will be accepted as a member. Amen. Amen. We just want to give her the right hand of fellowship. Uh, that's done on the first Sunday. Amen. What, what, what do we have a second? Second motion. It has been seconded by Deacon Jojo. All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed, put your hand down, devil. Ain't, no, ain't nobody but the devil. Uh, let's give the Lord some hand of praise. Welcome, aye. Sister Lacey. Just be faithful and do what you're doing. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead. What, the uh, right hand of fellowship? Oh, the baptism will be on the second side, but the, the first, she's, 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 she's. Yes, all right. Yeah, baptism will be on the second Sunday now. But she will receive because she come by Christian experience. It's just a personal request of hers to be baptized again. And I just want to let you know that's really not necessary, but we can honor that request. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody got a reason for what they say, and I'm not all into it. That's her and God's business. The good thing is, she's given her life to Christ. And that.
speaks volumes. Second Sunday of, will it be next Sunday? Well, I mean, May. Baptism on Mother's Day. It'd be on, you've been baptized on Mother's Day. You, <laughs> praise God. But you will receive the right hand of fellowship on the first Sunday. God bless you. And may he keep you. Is there any other? Maybe the Lord has been working silently while we were talking. And you see that there's none. But there's room at the cross for you. At this time, we come to part of the service where we all can play a part. It's that time of, of giving. We give. We are family. That's why we work in unity. We give. We are family. That's why God, Jesus did it all for you and me. We give, we are family. Jesus' report is the only report that we believe. We give, we are family. That's why God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are going to take us to heaven in eternity. We give. And this is all a part of kingdom building. Bring ye all the tithes unto the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now if you would say the Lord of hosts why would I open up the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing you would not have room enough to receive it it is now in the hands of the ushers and the deacons mm. Mm. tragedy Hallelujah. Say bless, 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 bless. Say blessed, bless, well, come bless, on with it. Hallelujah. bless. Let me hear you say bless, 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 bless. We're blessed, bless. Oh, we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. Oh. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must see. Join in on it. For the devil is defeated. We, we are, are blessed. We bless, bless, bless. Hallelujah. Bless. Bless. God loves bless. a cheerful giver. Oh, oh, oh. Let me hear you say bless. Bless, Hallelujah. Bless, bless, we're blessed. How many of you know you're blessed? blessed. Oh, Come on. oh, oh, oh. we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go home. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must be. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Oh, oh, oh. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Oh, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around and around and around and around and around. God's gonna turn it around. And around and around and around and around and around and around. And around. And around. And around. And around. Oh, 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 we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down the 
blessing business. All sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Gracious Father, thank you for the gift. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gift. Now bless those who gave. Bless those who had a desire to give but did not have. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, God loves.